want to get involved in your community? There are so many benefits in becoming a volunteer at City of Playford, including meeting new people, developing new skills, sharing your talents, improving your employability, as well as enhancing your own mental health and well-being. If you want to learn more about how to volunteer with us, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash volunteers. Is it time to do a big clean up around the house? We can help get rid of your unwanted items with a hard waste collection. You can book Norma to pick it up from your front yard, up to two times per financial year. To make a booking, call Norma on 82592100. The new My Playford mobile app is here. You can now stay up to date with the latest council news and info, set bin reminders, make online payments and send through your customer requests all in one place and at the touch of a button. Download the free My Playford app today for your iPhone or Android device. Want to know what's happening in the community? Subscribe to our fortnightly e-newsletter, Playford News, at playford.sa.gov.au and you'll be on top of stories, news and what's happening in Playford. It's local news for local people. Support your local theatre and arts industry and enjoy a show at the Shedley. Playford's iconic Shedley Theatre is bringing a great selection of local and national performances to Elizabeth this winter. For more information on their upcoming shows, visit theshedley.com.au or call 8256 0500. Have you visited the Stretton Centre on Peachy Road, Manopara? Designed to support growth in the city of Playford, the centre offers dedicated workspaces from less than $10 per day, state-of-the-art event and meeting spaces for hire, a complimentary business support service to help you upskill, apply for grants and grow, workshops, networking and training for young kids right through to adults and the city of Playford Library. Contact our team for a tour on 8254 4666 or visit the Stretton Centre at 307 Peachy Road, Manapara. Did you know you can view your rates notice online at Playford Online Services? Simply register for an online account by visiting our website at playford.sa.gov.au and searching Playford Online Services. Once you've registered, you can request to have your rates notice delivered to your device or computer. Prefer to watch and learn? We have created some simple videos to show you how to register for an account, view your rates notices and set up direct debit. Simply search for Playford Online Services via the Playford website for more information. That website again, playford.sa.gov.au. Are you building a house or doing some renovations that require planning approval? The way you apply for planning approval has changed, along with some of the rules of the Planning and Design Code. South Australia's new planning system covering the entire state was implemented on the 19th of March this year. So to find out more, visit plan.sa.gov.au. Did you know your food scraps should go in the green bin or a home compost system? It's better for the environment, it's the right thing to do, and it's easy. Fight food waste by putting all your food scraps, peels and leftovers in the green bin. To find out more, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash waste. Feedback about our city's future from our community is really important. It helps us prioritise your needs when planning services, projects and other initiatives. 
A convenient way to have your say and stay in the loop on any upcoming consultations is by registering your details on our Engagement Hub website at playford.engagementhub.com.au. We look forward to hearing from you. Want to get involved in your community? There are so many benefits in becoming a volunteer at City of Playford, including meeting new people, developing new skills, sharing your talents, improving your employability, as well as enhancing your own mental health and well-being. If you want to learn more about how to volunteer with us, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash volunteers. Is it time to do a big clean up around the house? We can help get rid of your unwanted items with a hard waste collection. You can book Norma to pick it up from your front yard, up to two times per financial year. To make a booking, call Norma on 82592100. The new My Playford mobile app is here. You can now stay up to date with the latest council news and info, set bin reminders, make online payments and send through your customer requests all in one place and at the touch of a button. Download the free My Playford app today for your iPhone or Android device. Want to know what's happening in the community? Subscribe to our fortnightly e-newsletter, Playford News, at playford.sa.gov.au and you'll be on top of stories, news and what's happening in Playford. It's local news for local people. Support your local theatre and arts industry and enjoy a show at the Shedley. Playford's iconic Shedley Theatre is bringing a great selection of local and national performances to Elizabeth this winter. For more information on their upcoming shows, visit theshedley.com.au or call 8256 0500. Have you visited the Stretton Centre on Peachy Road, Manopara? Designed to support growth in the city of Playford, the centre offers dedicated workspaces from less than $10 per day, state-of-the-art event and meeting spaces for hire, a complimentary business support service to help you upskill, apply for grants and grow, workshops, networking and training for young kids right through to adults and the city of Playford Library. Contact our team for a tour on 8254 4666 or visit the Stretton Centre at 307 Peachy Road, Manapara. Did you know you can view your rates notice online at Playford Online Services? Simply register for an online account by visiting our website at playford.sa.gov.au and searching Playford Online Services. Once you've registered, you can request to have your rates notice delivered to your device or computer. Prefer to watch and learn? We have created some simple videos to show you how to register for an account, view your rates notices and set up direct debit. Simply search for Playford Online Services via the Playford website for more information. That website again, playford.sa.gov.au. Are you building a house or doing some renovations that require planning approval? The way you apply for planning approval has changed, along with some of the rules of the Planning and Design Code. South Australia's new planning system covering the entire state was implemented on the 19th of March this year. So to find out more, visit plan.sa.gov.au. Did you know your food scraps should go in the green bin or a home compost system? It's better for the environment, it's the right thing to do, and it's easy. 
fight food waste by putting all your food scraps, peels and leftovers in the green bin. To find out more, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash waste. Feedback about our city's future from our community is really important. It helps us prioritise your needs when planning services, projects and other initiatives. A convenient way to have your say and stay in the loop on any upcoming consultations is by registering your details on our Engagement Hub website at playford.engagementhub.com.au We look forward to hearing from you. Want to get involved in your community? There are so many benefits in becoming a volunteer at City of Playford, including meeting new people, developing new skills, sharing your talents, improving your employability, as well as enhancing your own mental health and well-being. If you want to learn more about how to volunteer with us, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash volunteers. Time to do a big clean up around the house? We can help get rid of your unwanted items with a hard waste collection. You can book Norma to pick it up from your front yard, up to two times per financial year. To make a booking, call Norma on 82592100. The new My Playford mobile app is here. You can now stay up to date with the latest council news and info, set bin reminders, make online payments and send through your customer requests, all in one place and at the touch of a button. Download the free My Playford app today for your iPhone or Android device. Want to know what's happening in the community? Subscribe to our fortnightly e-newsletter, Playford News, at playford.sa.gov.au and you'll be on top of stories, news and what's happening in Playford. It's local news for local people. Support your local theatre and arts industry and enjoy a show at the Shedley. Playford's iconic Shedley Theatre is bringing a great selection of local and national performances to Elizabeth this winter. For more information on their upcoming shows, visit theshedley.com.au or call 8256 0500. Have you visited the Stretton Centre on Peachy Road, Manopara? Designed to support growth in the city of Playford, the centre offers dedicated workspaces from less than $10 per day, state-of-the-art event and meeting spaces for hire, a complimentary business support service to help you upskill, apply for grants and grow, workshops, networking and training for young kids right through to adults and the city of Playford Library. Contact our team for a tour on 8254 4666 or visit the Stretton Centre at 307 Peachy Road, Manapara. Did you know you can view your rates notice online at Playford Online Services? Simply register for an online account by visiting our website at playford.sa.gov.au and searching Playford Online Services. Once you've registered, you can request to have your rates notice delivered to your device or computer. Prefer to watch and learn? We have created some simple videos to show you how to register for an account, view your rates notices and set up direct debit. Simply search for Playford Online Services via the Playford website for more information. That website again, playford.sa.gov.au. Are you building a house or doing some renovations that require planning approval? The way you apply for planning approval has changed, along with some of the rules of the Planning and Design Code. South Australia's new planning system covering the entire state was implemented on the 19th of March this year. 
So to find out more, visit plan.sa.gov.au. Did you know your food scraps should go in the green bin or a home compost system? It's better for the environment. It's the right thing to do. And it's easy. Fight food waste by putting all your food scraps, peels and leftovers in the green bin. To find out more, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash waste. Feedback about our city's future from our community is really important. It helps us prioritise your needs when planning services, projects and other initiatives. A convenient way to have your say and stay in the loop on any upcoming consultations is by registering your details on our Engagement Hub website at playford.engagementhub.com.au. We look forward to hearing from you. Want to get involved in your community? There are so many benefits in becoming a volunteer at City of Playford, including meeting new people, developing new skills, sharing your talents, improving your employability, as well as enhancing your own mental health and well-being. If you want to learn more about how to volunteer with us, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash volunteers. Is it time to do a big clean up around the house? We can help get rid of your unwanted items with a hard waste collection. You can book Norma to pick it up from your front yard, up to two times per financial year. To make a booking, call Norma on 8259-2100. The new My Playford mobile app is here. You can now stay up to date with the latest council news and info, set bin reminders, make online payments and send through your customer requests, all in one place and at the touch of a button. Download the free My Playford app today for your iPhone or Android device. Want to know what's happening in the community? Subscribe to our... Four Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand for His Worship the Mayor? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. Welcome to tonight's Ordinary Council meeting. I open the meeting at two minutes past seven, and I'll call for apologies in a moment, but I'll start with our acknowledgement of country that we'd like to acknowledge that this land that we meet on today is the traditional land of the Ghana people, that we respect their spiritual relationship with their country, and the City of Playford would also like to pay respects to Elders past, present and emerging. I will call for apologies. I believe Councillor Bayani will be an apology at this point, but she may join us later in the meeting. Move to item two, confirmation of minutes for the meeting held on the 28th of March 2023 be confirmed as a true and accurate record of proceedings. Councillor Spujanek, so you'll move I that way? Yes, I move that. Do you wish to speak? No. All right. So find a seconder. Councillor Halls. Thank you. I'm I'll presuming you don't wish to speak. The mover and seconder don't wish to speak. Is there anyone wishing to make amendments to the said minutes? If not, then I'll put those. Those in favour? Those against, I declare that carried. Go to item three, declarations of interest. Are there any? Councillor Reefy. Yes, Mr Mayor, I would like to declare a uh, material conflict of interest on item 13.1 due to my um, employment uh, arrangement um, and I'll be leaving the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Reefy. Councillor... Thank you, Mayor. Um, out of an abundance of caution, I declare a material conflict of interest in item 13.1 um, and I will leave the room. Councillor uh, Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, uh, material conflict of interest for item 13.1, just 
being overly cautious. Thank you. Councillor Halls. Thank you, Your Worship. I will <coughs> declare a general um, conflict in 14.4 as I'm an executive on the board of the Play for Christmas pageant. Are there any other councillors wishing to declare a conflict of interest? I will declare one in item 15.4, 2023 Confidential Orders Review, uh, a material conflict of interest as one of the items uh, was in relation to me. Uh, with some correspondence and also that there was a number of items in which I've declared a conflict of interest uh, and have left the room previously in those items. I'll also declare out of abundance of caution a uh, conflict of interest, a material one, in item 13.1 in relation to a, um, some employment arrangements uh, that I have in relation with Senator Alex Antic. Are there any other declarations? If not, then we move on to Mayor's report, which are on the screen. So we have a number of items uh, for the month. The 102nd anniversary of the Royal Australian Air Force uh, was fantastic to attend with many members of the RAF base Edinburgh uh, for that celebration and obviously some uh, diggers as well who has served with the Royal Australian Air Force. It was a fantastic commemoration uh, with Her Excellency the Governor, the Honourable Francis Adamson AC, uh, and it really was a spectacular event to attend as part of that uh, celebration. There's a number of end of season presentation nights, uh, et cetera, as we scan down, um, obviously through the period um, of Ramadan, so there's some iftwar dinners uh, through those. Obviously football is back um, through the uh, gather round and also at Elizabeth Oval. Uh, it was great to be out with the youngsters from uh, a variety of service organisations, Ridley District Scouts, Playford Girl Guides, St John Cadets, CFS ca Cadets from Dow Keith uh, and the Multinational Pathfinder Cadets uh, for the rehearsal for the Anzac Overnight Vigil at Smithfield. Uh, it was really good to see the young people getting involved in that, uh, ready for our upcoming Anzac service. Um, and obviously to celebrate with our Cambodian community the Year of the Rabbit uh, over the weekend for the New Year Festival. So that's some of my reports that are on the screen. We'll go to item five, reports of representatives of council on other organisations. Are there any? No, go to item six, reports by councillors. Councillor Smallwood-Smith. Yes, um, thank you very much, Your Worship. Last Friday, I was extremely honoured at the um, LGA Ordinary Meeting at the Convention Centre to be awarded a 30-year certificate of 30 years of local government, and I'm very proud of that. And I also have a 30-year pin, and I'd like to thank the Mayor and Councillor Halls for being there to support me. It was really great. Thank you so much. You jumped in before Councillor Halls was going to mention that, Councillor Smallwood-Smith. Um, <laughs> I was going to let Councillor Halls uh, give you a bit of a wrap for that one, but I'll hand over to Councillor Halls because I know that she was going to mention Councillor Smallwood-Smith at the LGA that we attended. Yes, um, I was um, very pleased to be able to attend such a prestigious uh, event of Councillor Smallwood-Smith receiving her 30th, 30 years service to this community and to the amount of times that they have re-elected her just goes to show how much faith that the community have in her, in her, in her ward. And um, that was um, so much support and care in that room on the day um, that believed also that she has provided care and um, to her community and support to them and got things done. Thank you very much, Councillor. Are there any other reports by councillors? If not, Councillor Halls, you need to teach a button. Uh, we move on to reports of representative conferences and training programs. This is where I was now going to talk about Councillor Smallwood-Smith. Uh, I, as your delegate, attended the Local Government Association of South Australia's Ordinary General Meeting uh, last week. Uh, which was the opportunity for local councils to get together as part of the Local Government Association of South Australia. And while there, Councillor Smallwood-Smith did receive her 30-year certificate of service in which Councillor Halls and myself were present. Um, so on behalf of the City of Playford, we warmly congratulate you, uh, Councillor Smallwood-Smith, on receiving that, along with two other uh, local government members, uh, being one from the Adelaide Plains Council, uh, Marcus Strudwick, and 
the other lady's name just escapes me, um, who did the 20 Years of Service uh, Award. So that was a fantastic uh, opportunity for you to be recognised by your peers uh, across that day. We did not have any motions at the ordinary annual general meeting. Um, I followed the ticket in which you had proceeded at the previous council meeting for our recommendations on voting. Most of the rest of the day's conference was taken up in and around the election. Uh, it was great to hear from Mick Sherry, the electoral commissioner, who gave us a detailed synopsis of his views uh, on where and what should occur in the future of local government elections. The rest of the afternoon was then broken down to talk about things like nominations, eligibility requirements in a roundtable discussion in which Councillor Halls uh, and I participated in uh, and in and around the election process. Um, the LGA is currently looking at doing a review along with the government of that process and I also had the opportunity to have a discussion with the Honourable Jeff Brock, the Minister for Local <laughs> Government as well, who was quite keen to hear from individuals around uh, their views on the election process and what could be uh, improved in the future. So the LGA, I presume, will be having a forum in the near future um, seeking Council's views in relation to the election uh, and its processes. <laughs> Councillor Smallwood-Smith. Oh, sorry, uh, Councillor Halls. <laughs> Thank you, Your Worship. So, um, as the Mayor's talked about most of the stuff, I'd like to talk, just talk about... Um, I, I decided that I would go and stay um, for the, um, uh, the, the, um, the discussions that were going to be held on vote, voluntary and mandatory voting, as well as Mr Sherry's. So, as the, uh, Mr Sherry's been talked about, I'll talk about... Um, the voluntary to mandatory voting. So, um, Mayor Christina Holmendahl, I think is how you pronounce it, president of the LGA in Tasmania, um, she, talk, she talked about um, the um, having four years for, for terms of mayor um, and provisions to remove the legislative changes um, that had not progressed. They had discussed over a few years, in, um, since 2013, they had discussed about uh, having mandatory voting. And um, they did go to mandatory voting. Um, and they, the turnout was, for the 2022 election, the return rate was 85% from 55% in 2015 for compulsory voting. And um, the 22 election return rate of 35% from 33% in 2015 for voluntary. So they, they did notice a, a bit of a pick up. Um, they did have a multitude of issues, um, and that ar ranged around staffing um, for, um, for people voting. Um, community wanted to submit to the council chambers, not post it. They wanted to make sure that it got there. Um, they um, they didn't. They, they found that there was no support for the visually impaired. Um, so they're looking at um, what they're going to do about that. Um, leading up to um, um, for that, um, a review is being taken um, to describe the roles and services council need. Um, and the board is um, uh, identifying feedback um, to do that. Um, and uh, they had um, uh, they had also um, boundary consolidations uh, as well, um, and reduced the, the number of councils in in Tasmania. So that um, was an issue as well because people still didn't hadn't got the message around the changes. Um, so, um, and then, um, as we discussed, uh, as the Mayor discussed, there was um, um, roundtable discussions. We thought we were going to move from room to room for each discussion and only get one bite of the cherry, but they actually moved from room to room. We sat in the main room and they, they all came, all three uh, speakers came to us, so we, we actually got a say on the, uh, and a discussion on the voluntary to mandatory voting and um, about uh, a few other things as well. So I thought that all in all, if that was good. It was disappointing that a lot of people left after the AGM um, to go home, and um, which is unfortunate, but that often happens at conferences that people, especially the country people, 
that come up and they really want to be there for the AGM. But all in all, it was uh, it was quite a um, a good talk. I, I will um, write my notes up and put it up um, on the board for um, and hand it into um, governance later. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Halls. Is there any other council member wishing to make a report of representative of conference or training program? If not, then we move on to item eight, questions without notice. Are there any questions? Councillor Halls. Thank you, Your Worship. Could I just check with staff, please? I've had a couple of uh, residents come to me um, asking why we're not planting native trees everywhere. And I did hear something at the conference from somebody about there might be a reason why we don't plant 100% native trees and that we're doing some other... I'm happy if you need to take it on notice. Ms Hudson. Okay, because Ben's not here. Through the Mayor. Um, I will take that on notice. Thank you, Councillor Hawkes. Thank you very much. Councillor Rentoul. Thank you, Mr Mayor. My question is in relation to the Virginia Soccer Club and uh, a relocation to Riverlea Buckland Park. The question is, can staff please advise whether council has plans to relocate the Virginia Soccer Club to Riverlea at Buckland Park? And if so, when is this due to occur? Ms. Graves. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'll have to take that question on notice. Thank you. Supplementary Cancer question, Cancer please, Cancer Mayor. Cancer. Secondary question: Can staff please work with the Virginia Soccer Club Committee to facilitate a move to a new ground, including Riverlea at Buckland Park? And just for your interest, we've got some of the committee members here tonight. If we can please have some of our staff go to the committee and, and speak to them tonight, please. Thank you. Mr Green. Um, through you, Mr Mayor. Uh, Councillor Rentoulis, as you're aware, we've got our sports ground direction study um, coming up and we'll be presenting to Council in May. I think that's an appropriate time to talk about these sorts of things. Um, we'll certainly pick that conversation up at that point in time. Are there any other questions? If not, I actually have a question this evening. It's quite a serious matter, and my question is to the CEO. Elected members are required under the Local Government Act to provide an ordinary and primary return. It is the Council's position to redact information which could potentially put members at risk, such as their personal addresses. It has come to my attention today that one member did not have this protection afforded to them, and then personal information was placed on the website against and in contrary to the public interest. That member was myself. My question is, why did that occur? What will limit that in the future? And why was personal information not redacted when every other elected member of this city did have that information redacted? Uh, thank you for your question, Mayor Doherty, uh, and thank you for raising the issue with me late today. Um, at the, since that point in time, we've corrected the issue. Uh, I've yet to have the opportunity to investigate how it occurred. Um, I will do that and inform you of the outcomes of that in due course. And my supplementary question is to Mr Grain. What assurance will the elected member body have that information that should be redacted will be redacted into the future? Uh, as part of my investigation, I'll be seeking to ensure that there are appropriate mechanisms in place, and I will inform the elected members what they are. Are there any other questions? If not, then would those that have liked questions like to have uh, the questions and the accompanying responses in the minutes? So I wish to move by Councillor Rentoulos. Does it find a seconder? Second by Councillor Halls. Does the mover and seconder wish to speak? No. Are there any other discussion on this item? No. Then I'll put that. Those in favour? 
Those against, I declare that carried. We move to item nine, questions on notice, which we have two which are in the minutes and the accompanying responses are present. We go to item 10, which are mill petitions. We go to item 11, deputations and representations. And we do have a deputation this evening from the Virginia United Soccer Club. Uh, I believe it's Mr. Jack Kukafis. Uh, Did I get that right? If I apologise if I got that wrong, sir. Um, yes. One of the elected members had a question. I was inspired to. Well, once the light had gone off, we've, we've passed it. Well, it didn't, didn't get registered up here. Okay, we'll move to we'll move to item 11, deputations representations, which is for our friend from the Virginia Fo uh, Soccer Club. If you can come forward, please. Okay. Welcome to tonight's council meeting. So you've got your deputation. So it's five minutes. If uh, your time will start when you start speaking, at the four-minute mark, if you're still going, I'll just give you a warning to say there's a minute to go. At the conclusion of your uh, presentation, just stay at the podium as there may be some questions. I'll get you to start once the handout that you've asked to be distributed is distributed to everybody. Um, and just wait for a moment. And you're ready to go when you're ready. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Jacob Karkis, as, and I am from the Virginia United Soccer Club. I'm here tonight to make the council aware of some of the issues and challenges facing our club, um, as we've been discussing them with the council over the past few years, and we haven't been seem to be getting very far. So the club was formed back in 1996, and we are currently located at the Virginia Primary School, whose land is owned by the edu Education Department, so it's actually not council land. And the club was allowed to build a shed on these school grounds, which we have converted into a canteen, club rooms and storage. We currently have the one standard size senior pitch as well as a modified pitch. Back in 2017, the club had about four junior teams and about 50 members and a handful of volunteers. As of today, the club have over 210 members, which is spread over nine junior teams and four senior teams. One of them, is a, which is a fully fledged uh, women's side and we are currently involved in three different soccer associations. The club currently services a lot of the growing areas obviously of Virginia and around, and we have obviously welcomed our first families of the new Riverley estate. There are many issues facing the club, and I could talk forever about them, but the biggest one that the club faces at the moment is that we actually don't have toilet, toilets at the club. So to have 210 members, that's just play members, not including parents and visitors and stuff like that, and not have toilets, on the actual grounds. So this has been a known issue for many years and one of the solutions that has worked in previously has been able to use a community centre, um, the Virginia Community Centre, which is a um, gymnasium um, and which has worked in for a lot of previous years and it's something that we have, um, have, have been working on. Um, one of the issues though that has happened now is because Virginia is getting so busy that it is booked out pretty much every night of the week, including Saturdays and Sundays to private events. Um, so it makes it a bit more harder to access these toilets. Um, there are public, lo uh, public toilets located at the, pro uh, the playground. Um, however, you know, they do lock at sunset, so on a Thursday night or Tuesday night when we've got training, um, they're locked and so if uh, someone from our women's side wants to go to the toilet, they go home. Um, they have been on numerous occasions, especially with our women's sides, where they didn't actually come to training because they don't feel comfortable actually coming to training on certain nights. We have been very fortunate that we do have a very good relationship with the Virginia Rams Football Club. Um, we have been allowed to use the football, their football level on several occasions over the past few years to help preserve our only pitch. As you can see in the photo, the footy over looks a lot nicer than our soccer pitch. Um, so that soccer pitch currently has five junior teams and four senior teams training on it, um, and so it does deteriorate very quickly. So we train on it five nights a week between Monday and Friday with games on Saturday and Sunday, so it's used every night of the week. As soon as works, as uh, Peter and Tullis has mentioned, we have been in discussions with council about possibly moving to Riverley as soon as there the was announcements that the Riverley was basically gone ahead. 
um, basically we haven't really heard much since, so that's why the clubs really just want to know what's the what the go there is with Rivoli. The club has definitely outgrown its outgrown its position now at the Virginia Primary School, um, and yeah, to have 13 teams playing on one pitch is just not viable anymore. And we've actually turned away 30 kids, which is two other teams, just because we don't have the room. Um, it's not feasible, and we don't want to let kids down, so we've pushed them out to other clubs, um, just yeah, because because of the room. So basically what the club is really after is just some sort of confirmation that we will be given an, a first access to any sort of sporting, sporting facility in Riverley once it is available. And the reason why we said Riverley is because I think it's a win-win for both council and the club. Um, because obviously Walker Corporation and, and the council obviously will earmark space for ground love space for sporting grounds to be built. And we know they're not going to do build something in Virginia. We're happy to move five minutes down the road. So it's a win-win for everyone. We're happy to compromise. One minute. Yep. Um, and the, the and also like Peter and Tullis said tonight, and we'll also like to be given be kept in the loop regarding a time frame. The club will also like support from uh, council regarding possibly getting some temporary, like a temporary solution regarding some toilets, um, some portable toilets. As yeah, it's a bit hard to ask people to walk 300 metres <laughs> to go to go use the toilets on game days. Thank you for having us here tonight and listening to our concerns. And um, we look forward to hearing you from you in the future. We hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Okay, you do have 23 seconds left. If there's any final statements you want to make, no, nah, that's all good. Okay, all right. Don't say I didn't give you the opportunity. Are there any questions, Councillor Entwistle? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for coming out tonight, Jack, uh, Alana, and Greg in the the back row there. Um, it's been good to, to see the the growth of the Virginia United Soccer Club. It was only five, six years ago where um, I had conversations with particular community members who um, were a little bit negative um, in terms of um, sharing a, a facility, um, the, the main oval, with, at, with the, the football club. Um, I'm, I'm pleased that that has actually occurred. So the, the soccer club is using that particular facility, but it's, it's been fantastic just to see the, the growth. Um, 13 seniors, or 13 sides, um, or more than that, Jack, even more. Yeah, 13, yeah. Yeah, 13, 210 members, one women's side as well. Um, my question is to staff, um, in, in light of the growing pains that the soccer club is, is facing there at, at Virginia, um, particularly with respect to the, the women's side, it would be a bit difficult for them to have to, to go to the one toilet facility that's some 200 metres away. It, it, is it possible, can we work with the, the committee to, to, to put some temporary um, measures in place to assist them? For example, a, a portable uh, toilet or, or something to assist them. Is that something we can do? And regardless as to what the answer is, again, could we please have relevant staff member just work with the committee just to go up to them after the meeting and just have a chat to them, please? Thank you. Ms Greaves. Thank you, Shri the Mayor. Um, yep, we are exploring options for temporary facilities um, and we'll be discussing that in our workshop about the sports ground strategy. So, yeah, thank you. Sorry, this is something that we Is it to uh, guest? Yep. I'm just conscious that we, he's standing here asking while well, we're asking questions and stuff. Yeah. So, please come forward. Please come forward. Right. Councillor Rentals. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were pointing to our staff member. I'm happy to take some questions after, but I just, I'm just conscious our guest is standing here waiting for questions. So no, we'll... to, to Miss Greaves. All right. Can we just see if there's any more questions to yep. our guest, and then we can do that. Uh, Councillor Van Appere, have you got a question for our guest? I do. Thank you, Mayor. Um, thank you for coming out tonight and sharing that. And, um, you know, I do really sympathise with what the club's going through. Um, my question is um, just regarding the uh, Playford Sports Ground strategy. Did you have the opportunity to provide any feedback feedback like this in the consultation? Yeah, we there was a workshop. Uh, there was a workshop last year, I believe. Um, uh, that was held at the the lawn balls there out there just down the road. Um, so yeah, we gave a bit of feedback out there, and so that's so we've been to there. We had very similar discussions by then. So that was about. Well, about nine months ago, and then since then, we again been 
yeah, kept them a little bit in the dark. And but that's where in saying that we have been a lot of help from Wellesley Peter Tyson as well from councils helped us out with getting the footy oval because um, that's been a massive help us and for the like being able to use the football oval the club would be pretty stuff. So um, so in that regard. So but then at the same time. We don't want to ruin the, you know, the football club. They've got, you know, what well, we're experiencing growth. So is a football club, and I'm sure it's not just Virginia. It's, there's a lot of the Playford areas growing exponentially. So I know it's not, not, we're not the only club experiencing this. So, and that's why, yeah, the whole that's why our whole Riverley push is, yeah, it just makes it makes sense for everyone. It's just, it's, yeah, it's a win-win. Are there any other questions for our deputy? Yeah, That's thanks for that. Um, my question is, um, and I just want to acknowledge the, the growth of the Angvale Soccer Club has hit 30 something team, and I think they've been the biggest, they're now the biggest soccer club, and they struggle, and they've got three pitches. Yeah. Um, we've got the Royal Wolves, who have got three pitches. They're struggling, um, and I know they're trying to take um, utilise a, a rugby pitch. But the question is to, to you what alternates? have you been given as as options at the moment so putting river lee aside right now when you've got um that many teams training on a on a singular night throughout the week what options by council have they given you so far um so one one of turners we looked at last year was using the new super school there at angerville um for training and for game for was even for training more for game days um which we had a look at and we basically wasn't really going to work because of how where this new super school is, and this is where it has all positions, where the soccer pitches are right at the back of the, of the school. The canteens are a good four or five hundred metres away uh, from where the soccer pitches are. The soccer pitches are only a big size pitch, and not, so they're not modified, and the school wants it, I think, 250 or $300 a week rent um, per week to play on it, to use, to use their facilities plus line mark and all that sort of stuff. Um, that was one option for, that was just for game days, for playing, not even for training. Um, we have inquired about using the community centre as well for indoor training. So instead of training on it to preserve the pitch, use a community centre, but um, we've been told we're not allowed to, I mean, the community centre is booked out anyway, but then we're not allowed to kick a soccer ball inside the gym because we're not allowed to damage the paintwork. I think you've just raised some um, good points. It was only a few weeks ago that I expressed mm -hmm. a design of a, um, of a space and the proximity of your canteens and club rooms is actually quite vital yeah. um, for, for that particular reason. Is there any reason, you, you spoke about the condition um, of, the, of the oval as it is now, to preserve the condition, why you wouldn't make the decision to go to Riverbanks, which is a partnership, a long-term partnership by this council, where we've put significant funding into to bring that um, as an overflow mechanism. So probably what I'm asking is that, should you be charged for the hire of, of the venue? I don't know, that's a discussion for, for staff. Um, maybe that's something that staff could take on. Um, do they wear the burden for your hire fees because you've got a lack of facilities? That could be a, a discussion that you might be able to have. But I'm just thinking you need something short term. I yeah. think it's quite ridiculous um, that you have one, one pitch that you're hammering with so many teams. Yeah. Um, so. If, if, as the Deputy Mayor has said, <coughs> the committee comes to you, if, if some sort of short-term arrangement with, we want the long-term, I don't want to get that, but if yeah. a short-term arrangement come where there's an overflow of something, but there's a financial offset, would that be a consideration at all? Yeah, yeah, 100%. We're happy to, I mean, uh, our senior sides have previously, our women's side has played at, at Northern Wolves ground previously on a night. Our men's side has played at Kalara Reserves, which is where Andrew Swan plays, so we have, try to spread it around a bit as well. Um, just happy to play anywhere. Again, try to keep the peace of everyone, try to make yeah. it, because again, it, well, everyone's in, we understand everyone's in the same boat, and especially the last two, hopefully this year won't be as bad, but the last two seasons, we did cop a lot of heavy rainfall as well, so it wasn't ideal for not just us, but for most sporting clubs, so. And I probably just want to congratulate, it's actually good to see a club willing to move somewhere, so well done. You don't normally get too many clubs um, willing to move somewhere to sustain a future, so good job. Are there any other questions for our deputy? If not, then thank you very much for coming to the deputation. Councillor Antoulis. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, to Council, um, I understand that some of the uh, some of the final points that the uh, soccer club are looking to incorporate at a, a, at a new venue in the future are uh, the 
practical location of uh, canteens and a liquor license facility at that canteen. So can staff, um, given that it's quite likely that, that the Virginia United Soccer Club will move to Riverlea at Buckland Park, if that's ultimately the decision, can staff commit to, work, to working with the committee to not only relocate to that location, but when they re relocate, if they do, for there to be a, a, a canteen and a mechanism for them to sell liquor that's practical for that soccer club. Thank you. Mr. Green. Um, through you, Mr. Mayor, thanks, Councillor Intoulis. I'm absolutely happy for our sports team to continue to work with the soccer club uh, on their current and future needs. Um, I think what tonight's deputation has again highlighted to us is that we have an increasing challenge in this city around accommodating the needs of our various sporting clubs, which do fantastic work in our community. Uh, and I'll reinforce again the importance of our work on the sports facility strategy, um, which attempts to balance all of the needs of the various clubs right across our city. Um, and that will be a very important exercise for us um, as we move forward during the month of May. Thank you. Cheers. Councillor Marsh. Just the one for you to Sam. Um, do we have any infrastructure deeds social infrastructure DJ, I should say, um, associated with Virginia, the growth um, that could be utilised or I know I don't want to um, get you to express what's going to happen in the sports strategy, but is there funding, is there funding pathways um, from social infrastructure deeds as it's a growth area? Mr Langman. Through the mayor, uh, there are uh, there are social infrastructure deeds for Virginia, um, but those are limited in their scope to uh, community facilities um, and um, and don't cover uh, in most instances the full cost of that. So there's council decisions around that for sports grounds. Um, it is going to be reliant on the sports ground strategy. Thank you, Mr. Langman. We move on to item 12, motions without notice. Are there any motions? Councillor Marsh. Thank you, Mayor Dockety. I'll stand up now. Um, can uh, council, sorry, uh, that council notes the recent announcements by the AFL and the state government on the back of the success of the 2023 AFL gather round that South Australia has secured the AFL gather round hosting rights for the next three years. Council notes the intention to complete a master planning process that has already commenced of Elizabeth Oval and surrounds with the import from Central Districts Club in the draft annual business plan in 23-24. That the CEO writes to the Central Districts Football Club CEO seeking to meet and discuss a partnership approach to advocate for an AFL gather round game or the use as a training base for a high profile AFL club at Elizabeth Oval. The Mayor writes to the State Government Premier to request a meeting to hold talks around the opportunities for an AFL gather round game at Elizabeth Oval and Council is to be provided with updates during the advocacy period. Our report will be brought to Council at a suitable time, nominated by the CEO, to discuss necessary considerations if a game is played at the Elizabeth Oval, venue upgrades, costs etc. Um, we, we obviously see this, the motion um, without notice was on the back of uh, the, the recent success of the, the gather round to, to this state. Um, we we ha had a particular training session brought here um, in, in Elizabeth and we know that we've got time, one, two, three years, so this is not a year one, year two approach, um, we've got three years for our council to have early discussions with the, the state government. If it doesn't work, they're just gonna say no and we, we carry on. But I think with the extensive work that our staff are currently doing with the Central District's master plan that we funded last annual business plan and with further funding going towards it, I think it's an ideal time to bring those discussions in with the master plan. So uh, it's, it's very something very simple. Reason why the report has no nominated time frame is because discussions could go on for two Two years, and there's no point wasting um, any more time um, bringing back a report if another 12 or 18 months is is required. So um, there's got a role for for the mayor with the state government, and obviously got a role for our CEO to uh, to speak at um, to the CEO. And I think most of all, I'd I'd love to see central districts 
come on board as the partnership um, in, in the advocacy as well, because uh, we know how high profile Centrals are. And with the new CEO win, um, I think he would love to boost it even, even more. So um, if, that, if that can be supported, it'd be fantastic. And uh, if it's successful, great. If not, well, let's hopefully we can get some higher class um, training, training sessions. Thank you. Just before I call for a second, uh, um, Councillor Marsh, I'll just ask you, with your indulgence, if we can change the word State Government Premier to South Australian Premier. Um, there is no official title of State Government Premier. Thank you. Councillor Norris. Yep. Uh, I would like to second and quickly speak, if I may. Um, I think this is a great idea. Obviously, Gather Round had some pretty good economic benefits for the state, um, predominantly around the CBD and surrounding suburbs. Uh, getting something like that so high profile out here would be really good for our local economy. We've got the infrastructure already there. It obviously just needs a little bit of work. Um, we've got the transport connections. Um, we had a good turnout at the two training sessions for GWS and uh, West Coast. I had to think for a second because they're not my teams. Um, there's already talk about having it out at the Barossa, and I understand, you know, we've got the wine region out there, but it is also hard to get to by public transport. So, you know, if we could kind of meet them halfway, they can stop at Elizabeth, perfect. So, I'm all for it. Councillor Baker. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, happy, more than happy to support this. Um, I actually went over to the training sessions when the, uh, the AFL were up there, and they did make the statement that it was, in their opinion, the best oval in the state, and they couldn't understand why there wasn't a game up um, up at the oval there. So, uh, but they did come up and they they played on the oval, and uh, the interesting part about it was they had they had markers all the way around the centre of Central Districts Oval showing how small Nord Oval was. Councillor Wintour. thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I uh, uh, wholeheartedly support this uh, initiative. I think it's a fantastic idea. The gather round uh, was a tremendous success, um, as demonstrated by the ability of the Premier to, um, to convince the AFL to keep it here for a further three years. So uh, fantastic for tourism, uh, huge flow and effect in terms of the local economy. What I'm really uh, concerned about, or perhaps concerned is not the, the right word, what I'm actually anticipating is if we can success, su successfully um, get a game out at central districts, what might occur is there might be a significant amount of funding that's contributed to the Oval to bring it up to a higher standard. Um, there's no doubt about it. Uh, Premier Malinowskis has publicly stated that um, He's uh, very um, uh, vocal about keeping it here and he's willing to, to spend the money. So if we, if we could get it out here, money was spent, that would be fantastic. Even if money wasn't spent, the fact that it's out here um, in I, what I would term almost um, the heartland of football, um, between the city, you've got uh, the Elizabeth area, Adelaide Plains, you've got the Barossa. Many, many uh, footballers, AFL footballers, have come out from this region. Mm -hmm. It would be fantastic for this area to, to host an AFL game. Um, at Central Districts, it's Convenience Oval, which, according to Councillor Halls, uh, has a capacity of about 16,000 people. That would be fantastic. Councillor Smith Janet. Thank you, Mayor. Um, look, I think this is a great, great motion. Thank you for putting it forward, Councillor Marsh. Um, I guess something to be mindful of is, is that the sports strategy isn't out yet, so it's just something to be in the back of our mind when supporting this and when that does come out. Um, another one I have noticed with regards to parking around the central districts, I found that it's been quite difficult, so that will be something to do with the planning as well. So, um, yeah, cool. Cheers. The councillor is wishing to have a discussion. If not, Councillor Marsh has the right to close. He wishes not to. So we've got the motion that's before us. I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. Are there any other motions without notice? Councillor Norris. Yes. Do we have it? Cool. All right. Again, we have a little bit of a football theme going here, but it seems to be the night for it. Um, I would like, uh, so the, the Mayor write to the Premier of South Australia, Mr Peter Malinowskis, and Mr Tom Coutson-Turnis, Minister for Infrastructure and Transport, to support and recommend the following. 
that the football express service to Smithfield Station resume on game days and that there is consideration of connector or extended late night 443 services, particularly during significant events such as football, fringe, WOMAD and Velo 500. Can I speak to it? Thank you. All right, so we actually had a, a resident, well, actually a couple of residents come through to us now um, on the back of Gather Round, but they do consistently go to the football, as I do as well. Now, there seems to be a few concerns with essentially getting home on game days or even from fringe concerts that finish late at night. So the issues are that we have a 228 service. It runs hourly at night time. And then we have a football express that runs to the Elizabeth. Now, that's cool. If you live around Elizabeth, you can get home reasonably easy. Um, the 228 itself that this person tried to get onto was full and they had to wait another hour to essentially get close to home. Um, the other issue we have is the 443, I believe, stops running at 9.30 at night. Games generally finish around 9.30, 10. You're not getting back to Elizabeth or Smithfield until 11, 11.30 at night. Uh, you've got people walking home. They've got no safe way to get home. And I think, you know, on the basis that even when it was at West Lakes and when it initially moved to Adelaide Oval, we did have Football Express services that ran all the way to Smithfield Station. And there was usually a couple of them that ran sort of in 20 minute increments so that everyone could get home. Um, so I think it's kind of vital that we as a council put our support behind this. I know that um, Mr. Odenwalder's office already is aware of this, but I think it's important that council support this and obviously make sure our residents are safe. Thank you. Councillor Reevy. Yes, I'm happy to support this uh, motion. I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, 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 local resident uh, raised this issue with uh, the ward councillors uh, in Ward 5 um, and I think uh, it's important that we advocate on their behalf so I'm happy to support it. Any other councillors wishing to speak? Councillor Marsh. Um, just a question to staff. Are we aware if uh, the state government has in plans a, uh, a review into public transportation out here in the north, uh, not just inclusive of uh, growth areas at all, or DIT maybe upcoming doing one in the next one to two years? Because I think if, if there is, um, this is quite valid um, information that we're providing from grassroots um, to, to that one. So I just want to know if we're aware of that. Ms Hudson. Through the Mayor, I'm not aware of anything, but I will take it on notice and follow up. Are there any other councillors wishing to speak? If not, Councillor Norris has the right to close if she wishes. She's declined that. So I've got a motion that's before us. Uh, I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. Are there any other motions without notice? If not, then we move on to item 13, motions on notice, item 13-1. Thank you, councillors. Uh, agenda item 13.1, we have a mover for that. Councillor Marsh. Yeah, thanks, uh, Deputy Mayor Peter Antolis. I'm happy to uh, support um, this motion on, on notice that was um, submitted by, by yourself to, to, to council. Um, I'm not going to, to read it. It was in, in, our, um, in, in our agendas, but um, I'm, I'll just jump to, if possible, to, to speak to, to the motion. Um, this, this particular um, motion talks, talks a lot about um, how a process that comes up every, every four years, which is quite, um, it's a voluntary system that one can choose to, to, to vote, how we can further expand the accountability and transparency within a voting, voting system that's uh, open to, to everyone state, statewide. What's, Quite important is how you can improve the, the transparency in relation to your declaration and what you declare on your voting packs. 
we understand uh, recently, or it could have been the previous state government, um, and if not, I'm happy to be corrected, but changes came in where you had to start to define what ward you live in. You had to start um, defining if you are a political member 12 months prior to, to, an, to an election. I support that and I have no problems in that uh, declaration um, being going forwards. But what I do have a, a bit of a, a, a problem with is that if one is a staff member of a political party, regardless who that political party is, that you should have to define and declare that on your voting packs. Um, we're not, through this motion, seeking to change the profiles in which someone can um, run as a candidate. We're not, we're not looking at doing that via, via this. This is about the releasing of information of you working in a public office who at times are going to have a lot of local government topics coming over your, your desk, state government topic discussions happening. And I think it's very worthy of when you choose to put yourself forward as a, as a candidate, that people have that ability to respect, respectfully judge you based on your candidate profile, what you've declared, how you speak and your interaction with, with them. I think that um, this aligns, this 12 month time frame aligns exactly with the declaration of your 12 months leading to an election as well for, for being a member of, of a party. So what I do like about this as well is that a lot of the, the community want a very arm's length distance from those who work in various offices um, at a federal and state level from local government. Local government, although it could be deemed as a bit of a department of, of the state government of the day, um, want it to be as far away from anyone who may be affiliated at a state or federal level. So I think all this, this may not get up when it goes forward, and if it is supported to tonight, I think this is a, a quite a honest, upfront, and very public way to show that we, as the, as the collective um, who are in the chamber to, to vote, are happy for further transparency to be considered. And we obviously just heard um, tonight, to if it includes this or not, that there might be a review into the local government um, elections or processes or whatever. So maybe it is an ideal time to feed some of this information, just like we were with the previous motion with the, with the bus. Let's feed this information through a process um, and uh, let those who are you know, appointed in power to make the decisions. But I just want to make it clear, it's not about changing the credentials or the criteria of someone running. It's about you're in public office and you should disclose that um, to, to the public. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ash. Can I have a seconder to the motion? Councillor David Kerrison, thank you. Yep. Uh, th th thank you, uh, Councillor Antoulis. Yep, very happy to second the motion tonight um, and thank you for bringing this forward. I think it's something that's really uh, quite important um, because our residents regularly ask for transparency. Um, the thing I don't want to see is a party line come to this chamber. I want to see residents, people wanting to represent their community as individuals, come to this chamber predominantly. Um, I have no issues with people being part of Liberal, Labor, um, that's all fine, but I think it's really important for transparency that people are aware. Um, you know, and the next point to me raises, you know, that comes to my mind is conflict of interest. Um, there's many times we deal with issues with the state government, as tonight we're asking for motions to go forward with the state government. Um, therefore, if someone is working in an in a MP office, does that create a conflict of interest or does it not create a conflict of interest? Um, I think the residents, when they vote, all right, should have the opportunity of knowing what's happening, what's occurring and who they're voting for. Um, so, we've covered both of that. I think, um, furthermore, I think there was some evidence that I've seen in the last election as well. All right, and I think if it had been declared on voting packs, it would have given people far more information to what was happening and what was going on. Um, so I think, once again, for transparency is really important. So, um, yeah, in strong support of this tonight. Thank you, Councillor Antoulis. Um, 
you know, it's not stopping anyone working in a M MP office. And my other point that was a concern to me is, um, as an elected member with council, when I run for an election, I can't use any council resources. All right. Um, so, you know, and I also, as an elected member, can't have a job within council while I'm an elected member. All right. We don't. We do not exist in the constitution. All right. We're an arm of the state government. So therefore, if I had a if I had a business and th there was a company and I had a sub company, I couldn't get away with saying I didn't have a conflict of interest because it's a sub. So therefore, my question is how can we not have a job within council and be not, and not we can't do both, but yet we can be with the state government, which is an arm of council in effect. All right. So I think for me. I'm not saying it shouldn't happen, but I'm saying people should be aware of what's occurring um, and what they're voting for. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kerrison. Do we have anyone else that wants to speak for or against? Councillor Smiljanik. Thank you, uh, Councillor Rantoulis. Um, look, I think this is a very valid motion, to tell you the truth, and I think it could actually be slightly expanded, um, basically for our community. Um, and, and the transparency, as uh, mentioned before, I do understand that um, you know all voting people have the opportunity to know who they're voting for. So I think for the benefit um, of our residents, they're entitled to have all candidates to annotate their employment arrangements. Um, I think this would be inclusive um, for all candidates. At the last election, as most people uh, would be aware, we had to state whether we're in a political party or uh, or not. Um, and which one. So for me, um, I'm, I'm going to suggest to the mover, uh, perhaps an amendment for this mo a motion um, is to state that all paid employment arrangements um, that candidates have uh, occupied in the past 12 months, um, which include political parties, businesses, state or federal government roles, and uh, or any other organisations where a candidate may receive a financial benefit. Um, this will be inclusive for all candidates, um, so that way uh, those who are entitled or those who are able to vote, so it's not just residents, it's also people who work in our area, um, will know the candidate's employment arrangements. Um, and yeah, so I'm just reaching that out to you. So much. Thank you, Councillor. My understanding is that you're seeking the indulgence of the mover and seconder in relation to a variation to the motion, is that correct? Yes. Councillor Marsh, Councillor Kerrison. Yeah, if you're happy for me to um, just quickly speak, um, I want to leave it as it is. I just don't want to, although I acknowledge um, broadening the, the, the goalposts of, of this can be seen as uh, further enhancing um, com uh, transparency. I think it's moving away of the tiers of government coming together um, with a lot of community topics. It's it's that it's that arena what we're trying to let everyone everyone know versus what your uh, private. Um, employment is it's the fact that someone's in public office so um, although I respect what you're saying um, on this one I'd just like to stay um, as, it, as it is but thank you. Councillor Smelgenic as you've heard Councillor Marsh has declined the invitation for the variation that being the case would you like to move a formal amendment or would you like to leave it as is? I personally would like to move a formal motion, uh, amendment please. Sure sure um, we'll just work with staff in terms of the, the writing for that amendment? Yeah, sure.
Chancellor Smeljanic, we now have a motion before us. Is there anything else you would like to add to that? Uh, nothing further, Councillor Rentals. Thank you, Councillor. Do I have a second to the motion? To the amendment. Councillor Holes, would you like to second that? Yes, I would. Thank would you, you like to speak to the amendment? No, I think that everything's been said. Councillor Baker, would you like to speak to the amendment? Um, I'll speak against the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, look, I, I appreciate the uh, the sentiments involved in it, but I think I think the two issues are completely different. And uh, if Councillor Smoljanic decided to put that as a, a separate motion on notice next month to have that discussed fair and well, but I think the the issue of government employees compared to private sector employees is quite a different subject. So, um, uh, based on that, I would speak against that motion. The, the amendment. Thank you, Councillor. Could you just turn off your light, Councillor? Sorry. Thank you. Councillor Kerrison, you are permitted to speak to the amendment. Thank you. Uh, I was going to speak against the amendment. That's fine. Either yeah, or. I'm, yeah. I'm saying even though you've already yeah. spoken, it's amendment, you can speak again. Yeah. So, um, with this amendment, look, I... Um, in principle, I appreciate what uh, Councillor Sinlogic is trying to achieve, um, and if this came back as a separate motion, I'd be happy to support it. But I do think it's confusing the matter tonight. Um, you know, what uh, occurs with, um, as I'd said, the concern of conflict of interest with state government, the operation accounts and all that, people have a right. I think it's a different matter. Um, so, look, I think I, think I support your intent, um, but I'm against this tonight, um, and uh, I would welcome you to bring it back uh, next month as a, as a um, uh, yeah, as a, mo a motion on notice. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Marsh. Uh, thanks for that. I'd like to just um, support fellow councillors in. Um, I'm just. Uh, I'm going to speak against the amendment, but publicly happy to say that if a motion came forward, uh, remembering we're talking about bringing something to an annual general meeting so councils can bring stuff or we're not making changes we can bring items forward um, i'd be happy to to support that if that came back to um, a, the next ordinary council meeting uh, but tonight i won't support it but uh, definitely happy as it's uh, along the lines of the of what we were previously talking on the initial one um, but yeah i think we're just crossing over slightly the intent of the uh, the previous motion Thank you, Councillor. Does anyone else want to speak for or against the motion, or the amendment, sorry? If not, Councillor Smiljanic, you have a chance to close. Thank you very much, Councillor Rentalist. So, uh, for me, uh, I do respect what you're saying. Thank you. Um, my thoughts are that um, noting that this would be going to a local government election, um, noting that there are more than just the state uh, government personnel working um, in that area. Um, we also do, in this council, have people working within the federal government as well. Um, so for me, I thought that would be quite um, a way to include uh, all candidates. Um, it would be very transparent. And although that um, I have changed uh, dot point number one, I still believe um, the dot point two and three do roll in and do support that uh, number one. So um, I personally uh, would love to get your support. However, um, uh, we'll see how it goes. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Smiljanic. Uh, I'll put the amended motion on the screen to a vote. That was moved by Councillor Smiljanic and seconded by Councillor Holes. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that motion lost, but division was called. I'll set aside the, the motion. Those that voted for the motion, would you please stand up? The amendment. Those who voted for the amendment, please stand up. <laughs> for the ease of the, the note taker, um, Councillor Smiljanic and Councillor Holes are the only two that have um, voted in favour. And everyone else has voted against. Therefore, I declare the motion lost, the amendment lost. Now, we have an original, we'll go back to the original motion. Is there anyone else that wants to speak to the original motion? The original motion. Yeah, unfortunately, you can't speak. Council, do you want, would you like to ask, ask a question? Um, oh, apologies, you, you may speak, my, my mistake. I 
frame it in the way of question, if you like. <laughs> question of... No, you may speak. Thank you. Just to, uh, to give Councillor Smiljanic some comfort, the, uh, the motion that is on notice isn't just for state government, it's also federal government. It's general in terms of government. Anyone else? Look, if there's no one else, um, I'll be very, very quick. I'll summarise. Um, this uh, is, a, is a motion that I brought forward um, for the, the purposes of transparency, right? So um, if you're a, um, a resident or ratepayer out there, I think it's a good thing to have as much information in front of you as possible in relation to who you're going to vote for. Now, um, I respect uh, the, the views of Councillor Smiljanic. Um, her, her motion was not uh, unreasonable. It's quite broad and encompassing. Um, the only thing that I'll say is this is a very particular motion, very specific in its scope, and it relates to um, public office, in particular the, the, uh, the major political parties. Um, it is in relation to employment arrangements. For, so for those of you who volunteer in, in uh, offices for state MPs, you don't have to declare anything. Um, this isn't a labor, labor thing. It's not a liberal thing. It's a transparency thing. And that's all I, I want um, to, to say on the issue. I had uh, quite a lot more to, to say, but I, I won't, um, other than um, an interesting point to make right at the end. Um, the councillors that have left the, the room, they have every right to. They have to look at the situation and declare um, a conflict if they so believe one exists. But this further supports the concern that I have for uh, people working in, in, in offices. If you have a situation like in New South Wales or Queensland where political uh, parties dominate council, Imagine a conflict of interest. What every single councillor leaves the um, the chamber, and there's no quorum. So it's another thing to, to consider. Um, in any event, I'm I'm done. Um, uh, Councillor Marsh, you may close the debate. You don't want to. All right, I'll put that to a, a vote. Uh, those in favour. Those against. A division has been set as. A division has been called. Oh, I set aside the, the motion. Those voting in favour, please rise in your chair. Again, for the ease of the note taker, that's everyone voting in favour. I declare that carried. Thank you. Okay, councillors, we move on to committee reports. We go to the first item, 14.1, rating policy and procedure and rate rebate policy and procedure on page nine. Councillor, on your end. Yeah, I'd like to move the uh, committee recommendation. I do not wish to speak. Does the item find a seconder? Councillor Halls. Yes, thank you. I think that um, it's uh, a lot of hard work has gone into that policy and uh, I think that uh, it says everything that we need to tell people. Thank you, Councillor. Any other councillors wishing to speak? Yep. Councillor Smiljanic. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to uh, raise a couple of small grammatical errors with regards to the rating policy and procedure and the rate rebate policy. Uh, am I able to mm -hmm. uh, yes. state which one? So yes, please. With regards to uh, the rate re rebate policy, uh, para two, just ensuring that the uh, sections, there's two in that particular two paragraphs. Can you just give us the page number? Uh, page number 41 on the uh, agenda, or mm -hmm. page two on the rebate yep. policy. Mm -hmm. Rate rebate policy. 
Yep, and then what was the what was the issues? So the the issue is in para two under scope. The there's the word sections uh, 160 to 165. Uh, sections is lowercase to uppercase that, and also uh, the next paragraph, capital S for section 166. Only very minor. Okay, is there any other suggestions? Uh, and then you've got under the rate uh, rate rebate procedure, very similar on page 44 on the uh, agenda. Uh, under para 4.2, mandatory rebates, again, same issue with regards to section is not uppercased. Same again with 4.5, Granting of rebates, uh, sorry, 4.6 application approval process. Um, ca uh, Capitalise that S on section. And then again on para five complaints and appeals, capitalising that S in sections 270. Thank you, Councillor. Just hold on a moment. Um, with the mover and seconders indulgence and with the leave of the council, we might add a further dot point that uh, gives the CEO the, uh, the power to, um, uh, yeah, to, to, to revise the document to improve uh, and fix any grammatical and spelling errors. Yeah, and then we can also add which doesn't change the intent of the policy. So, um, is the mover and second happy with that? I'll seek leave. Does anyone, anyone object to that? Because I can put it to a vote. If no one's objecting, leave is granted. So we'll just add that dot point in there. There is some wording we normally use, and I think the minute taker is just going to provide that. Yes, that's the usual word, yeah. yeah. Not just the overall intent of the policy and procedure. All right, and leave was granted for that. Are there any other discussions from councillors? If not, then uh, Councillor Onyzance has the right to close if she wishes. Happy as it is uh, put there before us. Yeah. Thank you. All right, I will put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. We go to item 14.2, fees and charges 23.24. Councillor Halls. Thank you, Your Worship. I move the uh, committee recommendation. Thank you, Councillor. Does it find a seconder? Second the motion. Seconded by Councillor Bank. I'm presuming the mover and seconder don't wish to speak. No, if there's no other councillor wishing to speak, then I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. Move to item 14.3, normal budget, 23.24. Councillor Baker. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Happy to move the recommendation. I'd just like to ask a quick question, if I could, mm -hmm. of the CEO. Um, on the first page, page 71, it says on one of the dot points that while no... Uh, no announced charges in the state government waste levy is assumed. A modest 3% increase um, will be adjusted. Have we had any indication from the state government about the increase? It just bothers me of the huge increase that they uh, suddenly descended upon us last time. And that 3% to me doesn't, doesn't seem to be a great deal. Mr Graham. Uh, three, Mr Mayor. Councillor Baker, I'm not aware of any indication about what the increase might be at this stage, and, and historically it has come a little bit later in the, in the year. Thank you. Councillor Halls, are you seconding the motion? Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Are you wishing to speak? No, thank you. Any other councillor wishing to speak? Councillor um, Kerrison. No, thank you, Mayor Doherty. Um, Look, overall, I support, um, but I did have a couple of concerns regarding the um, increase on some of the dumping ch charges. Um, on page 75, um, some 25% increase. Um, the bit I'm looking at the moment is regarding the um, trailer 8 by 5s um, which is on a commercial basis, but I just wanted some feedback on that, if I could.
Mr Green. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, Councillor Carrison, can I just seek some clarification? Are you, are you seeking to understand the reasoning behind the increase? Is... Uh, that, that's correct, yes. Yeah. Um, that's not probably something that uh, a staff member will have that level of knowledge about. Um, these, these increases were presented to the normal board uh, who did uh, authorise them for the purposes of sending them to council for feedback. Uh, my suggestion would be if you're concerned with the increase, or if council's concerned with the increase, we could give that feedback through this process to say that um, we, you know, we might approve the overall budget, we would like those fees to be looked at, etc. Thank you. Any other councillors wishing to make comment? If not, Councillor Baker has the right to close if she wishes. She does not, so I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. Move to item 14.4, Community Development and Event Grant 22-23. Councillor Smiljanic. Happy to move the motion. That's the staff recommendation. Right, we'll, just, we'll just wait a moment till Councillor Halls has vacated the room. Okay, Councillor Smiljanic, you're happy to move the motion? Yes. The find a seconder. Can you just turn your light off? Uh, Councillor Reefy. Happy to second. Uh, anyone else wish to speak? If not, then I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. Can somebody ask Councillor Halls to return? We then move on to item 15, uh, 15 one budget update report. <coughs> Councillor Rentals. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Happy to, to move that way. Do not need to speak. Let's see, item find a seconder. Seconded. Seconded by Councillor Baker. I'm presuming not wishing to speak. Any other councillor wishing to speak? If not, then, oh, Councillor Smalljane. Thank you, Mayor Doggerty. Uh, one thing I just want to bring to um, your mind, I'm, uh, everyone's uh, uh, view, is I'm going to take on board that number two and just uh, not, uh, notify the amendments that I've noticed. So one in particular is on page 141 um, of the minutes. Uh, I've noticed that the, uh, the suburbs of our wards are incorrect um, in that particular page, page 141. Uh, Councillor Smuljanik, are you in item 15.1 budget update report? We're in item 15.1 budget update report. Are you oh. in the draft annual business plan? Uh, yes, apologies, I take that back. Thank you, Councillor Smuljanik. Are there any other councillors wishing to make comment on item 15.1 budget update report? If not, then I will put that. Those in favour? Those against, I declare that carried. We then go to item 15.2, which is the draft 23-24 annual business plan and budget. And before I call on anyone, as you will be aware, we do have a corporate governments committee and um, they obviously do assess uh, information related to the annual business plan. And as per local government practice, the chair of the corporate governments committee, as per in our agenda, uh, is invited to provide a presentation to council. So I'll ask if Mr. Mark Labaz can come forward, please. Councillors, so we have our Chair of our Corporate Governance Committee, Mr Mark um, Labaz, who will be presenting to us this evening. Um, Mark, would you like questions during your presentation or at the end? How would you like to run the session? Um, if I may, I'd rather just present and then take questions. Yes, more um, than happy to do that. That's yes, absolutely. And over to you. 
Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and uh, thank you, councillors, for um, giving me the opportunity on behalf of the Corporate Governance Committee to talk to you about um, the 2023-24 draft annual business plan and the long-term financial plan review and, I guess, the thoughts that have, that have been expressed on behalf of the Corporate Governance Committee. So at our Corporate Governance Committee meeting held on the uh, 4th of April, management and staff presented the committee with the draft 23-24 annual business plan and the long-term financial plan for review. Um, I guess these presentations are really beneficial to the committee because it enables us as a committee to provide yourselves as, as council uh, with advice that may assist yourself uh, as council in making a decision with respect to budget preparation and to uh, deliver the 23-24 um, the financial year annual business plan. Um, it's also imperative under our Corporate Governance Committee Charter that we actually undertake this activity uh, on your behalf. Um, because the Charter does stipulate that the Committee um, propose and provide information relevant to a review of any Council strategic man management plans, including the annual business plan, which the Committee should review and provide recommendations to you as uh, Council, particularly on the sustainability of uh, Council's financial performance uh, based on Council's financial um, indicators and ratios. Um, on behalf of my colleagues of the committee and feedback from them after the presentation, they, they really wish to acknowledge the proactive and um, collective approach that um, council and staff have actually undertaken uh, since, I guess, December 2022 to date to actually consider the new projects and services that you're proposing to be delivered to the community in the 23-24 um, annual business plan and the costs and expenses that are required to continue the delivery of the existing services that, uh, that you provide to the community uh, through available funding pathways. Um, I, the, the committee also wanted to pass on through me to you. They'd like to acknowledge the transparent and consistent approach that's been undertaken um, in assessing the financial sustainability um, by the development of, of a robust suite of um, financial indicators and targets which are um, critical and, and uh, established in your financial sustainability ratios and in Council's uh, targets, policies and procedures. Um, so following the presentation regarding the 23-24 uh, annual business plan and long-term financial plan, um, as can be seen on uh, screen, the committee um, resolved that we would support um, and provide advice to Council option one being um, a rate rise of 7.91% for several reasons, which I'll probably just allude to briefly. So firstly, we, we believe that it's, it's, it's the, uh, the most viable option because it does promote that financial sustain sustainability by bringing council in line with its target ratios. Um, so option one provides, if you look at your target ratios within your um, portfolios, that your operating surplus, structural surplus, uh, interest expense and net financial liability ratios um, are all within your target range under option one. You've only got two uh, ratios, being the cash flow operations and uh, only asset renewal funding that aren't within range. Um, whereas if option two was considered, being a, a rate rise of 7.16%, 50% of your financial ratios would not fall in to your required target range um, and they would not be returned to those, those target ranges until the 24-25 financial year. The committee also supported option one because it allowed for the continuation of existing services, which is important, but also it allowed for new services and projects to be um, undertaken uh, throughout the community, um, which I, th you know, we we believe as a committee is the true cost of doing business um, next financial year. Um, plus, it gives you the opportunity to undertake new works and services, uh, along with um, clearly being able to continue on with existing services to to the community, which I think is critical um, uh, for uh, yourselves. <laughs> It also accords with Council's finance strategy, and that is that uh, you know, ensure that Council has the means uh, to fund the services and projects it provides to the community, not just now, but into the future as well. The committee also supported option uh, one 
because the rate increase was in line with CPI, uh, which we considered to be pr uh, prudent financial management. And more importantly, it actually avoids rate increases uh, in excess of CPI in future years. So on balance, we're looking at potentially one large rate increase for one financial year, and, and then a return to a rate rise that may settle down to say three to high 2% over the years two to nine of your long-term financial plan. So the increase proposed, it does accord with CPI, which is quite coincidental, but it does bring out, you know, the cost of your debt down and uh, it does enable you, as I've mentioned before, to deliver new services to the community. Um, and it's important to note that in respect to CPI in December 2022, the rate was actually 8.6%, um, which was up from, I think when I spoke to, to some of you last year, it was up from 3.3% this time last year. So the, you know, the December 22 forecast is applied to assist with the affordability of your service delivery to the community. Um, the other important thing of, I think, of option one in, rega in regards to the prudential financial management is that it allows council to maintain an operating surplus of uh, 5.5 billion and a structural surplus of 1.3 uh, million. We also thought that option one um, for the proposed budget included a continuous improvement in savings to help fund part of the budget. So no, no additional capital expenditure was required. We could see that there was a business as usual uh, approach in respect to financial targets currently set in your long-term financial plan. Um, but despite having a rate rise, we still could see, and it is still demonstrated based on the presentation provided to us from staff and management, a continuous improvement savings of you know, close to 560,000 or 0.62%. Um, the proposed budget um, for option one also manages the risks um, associated with significant growth by provi providing that additional resourcing. Um, so it, in some ways it addresses the funding challenge of existing services growth uh, being 2.24 million or 2.5% 2 .5 of the pro's uh, rate rise and a commercial growth of about 416,000 being 0.46% uh, of the proposed rate rise. But more importantly, it actually supports council's risk appetite for financial sustainability, which is that council has a low appetite for short-term financial risk that adversely impacts uh, on the delivery of the long-term financial plan and the council's overall stability and sustainability. We found, um, and I guess the view expressed by my colleagues in the committee was that the preparation of the budget had been very well considered and it was well reasoned and it was comprehensive in terms of the challenges facing council. And I guess the challenges that are facing council are not just limited to this local government authority. These are real unavoidable cost pressures that we as a community or a local government authority have to deal with. So whether it's whether we're looking at electricity prices and that's a common issue for most local government authorities, the management of our growth, increase in fuel prices, increase in contract rates and supply chain issues, increases in superannuation payments, uh, interest payments. We me you mentioned Norma, the Norma deficit as well. So all, these are all things that uh, are putting pressure on our budget and they need to be um, addressed. Um, I guess the other funding challenges that, that it, the council is experiencing, and again, not this council uh, only, but you know the, the issue of base budget, CPI, and also your new services and assets and, in, and growth, and the growth of your existing services. So having this option, as I've said before, gives you the ability to continue the excellent services that you're providing, but gives you that opportunity to provide additional services to, to your community. Um, and you know, in reality, if, if we weren't looking at some of these cost improvements, we'd be potentially looking at a, a rate rise equivalent of potentially 2.44%. So that's all I really wanted to discuss or just to impart to, uh, today, just to give you an, um, an opportunity to, to hear from the committee and what our views were in respect to uh, what was proposed. Thank you. Are there any questions for the Chair of our Corporate Governance Committee, Mr Mark Labaz, in relation to the committee's resolution or any other thoughts on the annual business plan and budget or long-term financial plan or strategic asset management plan? <coughs> Councillor Rentoulis. You had a question for Mr Labaz? Yeah, thank you for your presentation. Um, 
just wanted to, to ask, just in relation to the, the committee, you're a independent board member from outside the organisation. You, you don't work, obviously, for the for the uh, city of Playfair. So I just want to establish we've got quite we've got a few independent board members on the committee. Do we not? Is that, is that the case? I just want to establish that. Through me, yes, I'm I'm one of the independent members. There are three independent members um, on the committee, and as per the committee charter, one of those independent members is appointed presiding chair, and that position is rotated from time to time. Sure, thank you. Um, so you, you've come to the conclusion, or the committee has come to the conclusion, that uh, we should go out um, to consultation, public consultation, with option one, seven point nine percent. What's the, the major reason for option one as opposed to option two, seven point one seven percent? Through, through, through the mayor, um, I, I think it's well. There's a few things as I discuss. I think if I reflect back on my discussion to. Uh, the elected member group 12 months ago, there was that balance of trying to maintain the existing services, but then giving you the opportunity to promote additional services. And I've heard, obviously, discussions today regarding sporting opportunities, and I think that's that's good. I think being uh, having the opportunity to return to a surplus situation within 12 months was another driver for some of the um, commentary made by my colleagues um, from, the, from the committee as well. Um, and they were the, the, the two key reasons, but I think also the fact that, similar to last year, the, 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 the level of consultation that has occurred between the elected member group and the staff in regards to practical solutions to, to balance growth with um, service delivery um, were, the, were the drivers for, I guess, this is our recommendation, and as a committee, we can only recommend to you. We, we can't say that you must, and they, they were the key um, I guess, reasons uh, that the committee uh, proposed those um, reasons. Thank you. Councillor Baker. Thank you. Just a, a quick question. Can you just slightly elaborate on the implications should we not go through with that 7.9 uh, increase and the effect it has going forward? Through the Mayor, thank you for the question, Councillor. I, I, I guess uh, there's a potential that if we un increase the rate rise at a, at a lower percentile, there's a potential for the remainder of that long-term financial plan where you may be looking at even higher rate rises in years three, four and five, or there may be an issue, uh, there's a longer-term return to surplus. And I, I recall we were having this conversation, again, a different, potentially a different elected member group, but this is a generational decision. So um, you may, and as I mentioned, you may have a situation where there may be a, there may be a decision of council. We may, may raise the rates to only 45 to 5%. But then when you look at your long-term financial plan in the years to come, the next rate rises may be in double digits. So we felt this was probably the most balanced approach where you know, it's quite high for, for one year, but there's a, I think the driver for the committee was that return to surplus within 12 months, which I think was critical. But also, again, and again, hearing from deputations t tonight, seeing the fact that you can continue to deliver on what you're delivering now, but deliver new projects and outcomes and uh, achievements for the next financial year as well. Councillor Norris. Thank you. Um, I just want to make note on there and ask a question. In terms of, you talk about uh, allows for continuation of existing services as well as new services and projects at 7.91%. But is it not also true that at 7.1% we can still continue on with the services that we are currently giving to our constituents? Through the mayor, uh, correct. But I guess one of the one of the recommendations from my colleagues of the committee was we were looking at. Um, Attempts at cost savings as well, and and and, uh, and if we were to have an option of seven, or if you were to consider an option of seven point nine one, then uh, the surpluses that you have uh, would be higher than they would be at seven point one six. So that was the p potential driver for that comment. Councillor Reid. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've got a couple of questions. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, just uh, you mentioned about the uh, uh, cost pressures right across the local government sector. Um, are you able to advise um, what you know the, the the general rate increase other councils are proposing 
in in this current economic environment. Uh, for me, I'm not really privy to, to that information. You know, each each council is basically doing exactly what we're doing tonight, um, and I don't have that information on me. Okay, thank you. Um, but I, I would add um, that yes, yeah, certainly the cost pressures that I mentioned in regards to say electricity. Um, Contra increase in contracts, supply chain issues, based on my conversations with my other colleagues in local government, um, their general concerns and general well, cost pressures. Yes. Yeah. Um, you also mentioned that the, the decision uh, to support the option one was um, to, to, you know, there's this, this urgency to um, bring the council in the surplus position in the next 12 months. Do you think that under the current economic situation we're in, is there was there considerations made to delay, uh, you know, that position, uh, and and determine what the economic environment will be in 12 months' time, so there's less impact on our ratepayers. Uh, through uh, the mayor, th those discussions were had. Um, I guess one thing at this tier of government, um, I think one th one thing that I'm sure that you've seen through the presentations of staff. Um, during the discussions of this budget was what is the actual increase if we looked at seven if you looked at 7.91 what is the actual re increase per week per has household versus 7.16 um, and what impact that would have on hardships with the community one of the greatest benefits of local government unlike other tiers of government is that you know Local government has the option, and this council and other councils have that option through hardship policies and other policies to work with those members of the community um, who are suffering hardship um, and stress to actually work on a, on a plan. And I guess one, again, looking at the statistics that were presented to us, when we're looking at a population, say, of 45 to 55,000, where you're looking at maybe 300 people seeking delays in payments or, or, or due to hardship, there is that opportunity as a local government tier to actually work with those people and help them out. So we're not, you know, if we were looking at that 70% of the population would be impacted to that degree, then certainly that would have had, we have probably had a different point of view. So we were, we, and that's why I really wanted to pass on the acknowledgement of the committee of how the, this package has been put together in partnership with management and yourselves as, 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 as the elected member group. Are there any other questions, Mr. Labaz? If not, if you've got no other further remarks, then thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you, Your Worship. All right, councillors, we've got item 15.2, which is the draft 2023-24 annual business plan and budget, long-term financial plan, strategic <coughs> asset management plan, for public consultation. Councillor Rentoulis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to, to move the staff recommendation, please. Go ahead. Thank you. So, councillors, um, option one um, recommends that we go out to public consultation with a, a rate rise of 7.9%, which certainly on the face of it does seem relatively high. Certainly can see that right at the outset. Um, four years ago, during the, the last chamber, You'll recall that we had almost uh, record um, low levels of, of rate rises. I believe across the, the four years we averaged below 2%. And the reason we did that was the economic environment climate was very different, markedly different to what it is now. There was a uh, once in a century pandemic that no one um, had ever seen before and the the way we looked at um, dealing with our budget I think was was in line with that difficult time very empathetic the other thing to bear in mind as well is that since the federal government um, the new federal government the Labor government was elected to power in May of last year the Reserve Bank has increased rates on I believe 10 occasions, nine consecutive rate rises, 10 overall in the last 12 months. So interest um, 
has gone up significantly. The ability to, to borrow has gone, gone up significantly, which also has meant that our costs as a, as a business um, have, uh, have, have gone up quite significantly. And um, if you look at inflation at the general um, uh, price index, I believe the last quarter was in excess of, of 8%. So this particular rate rise is in accordance with um, inflation, with such things as spiraling, spiraling electricity costs, insurance costs, um, the costs of delivering projects through business contracts. Everything has gone up. The council is not immune from that. It is absolutely the case that every household has to take into account these factors. And no one here, I think I speak for the, the council, no one here wants to increase rates by almost 8%. No one wants to do that. But as Mr Labaz said um, in his previous presentation, if we don't make the hard decisions, then in the, the next years, maybe next year, might be in four years' time, there might be significantly higher rate rises when right now we can justify a rate rise of almost 8% because of the economic environment that we're in. And if you look across, I certainly don't know precisely what each of our neighbours are doing. Um, I know, I believe that Gawla was going out at 7% or 7.5% or there, thereabouts. Point I'm making, it's very, very similar. Salisbury is about to go out with three options. Key difference with Salisbury, and it's I don't like comparing our council to Salisbury or our council to any other particular council out there because it's not a fair comparison. It's not apples with apples. This is the fastest growing council in the state. I believe it's us or Mount Barker. Um, we have hundreds of kilometres of roads to service. We have we are far larger geographically than Salisbury Council. There's no point comparing Salisbury Council. Salisbury Council's debt levels are significantly lower. I believe at, at about $40 million. Ours, as of the 31st of March, were just under $100 million. So a big difference. And I've seen what they, they, they put out. They're wanting to fund their, um, their proposed rate rises through deficits. Through deficits. We have... We have gone through many deficits in the past, and I, I'm not here to look at the pros and cons in relation to that, but I don't want this, ch this chamber to go back to borrowing money to run. It's a bad way to do business. It would be equivalent to a household borrowing, using their credit card to live. We shouldn't be doing that. So the next question is, if we, if we don't go at 7.9%, what do we go out at? 7.1, fair enough, that's a possibility. 7.9 guarantees us a structural surplus of around $1.3, $1.35 million. Year in, year out, $1.3 million. We can use that next year to reduce the impacts of any future budget that's harsh for the ratepayer, for the resident. We can use it for things such as new change rooms for sporting facilities that are crying out for it. So this makes um, economic sense. We have to make some difficult decisions. And I stress, four years ago, there was a completely different economic environment. CPI is right across the board, well over seven, seven and a half percent. What we're actually doing with this budget, if you... Um, if we eventually endorse it. And by the way, tonight isn't about endorsing the budget. Tonight's all, all, all tonight is about is sending it out for public consultation. So just send it out and see how we go. For those of you that are a bit concerned, send it out, see how we go, and then you can vote a different way later on if you, if you like. But um, this particular budget also ensures that um, a number of of different services are provided, services that our, um, that our residents expect. Some of those uh, services are the FOGO bins, the green waste bins. Another uh, significant part of the, the 
Um, the budget right across the board is the um, uh, greater amount of tree planting to increase our urban tree canopy. That's a good thing. It reduces um, heat. Um, it's good for, for mental health. And from an aesthetics point of view, it just makes our city look a lot nicer. So, um, in summary, um, we have to make difficult decisions. This is one such time, unfortunately. We are just going out to public consultation. Ratepayers can look at what we've put out and um, that they can certainly make their, their views known on this particular um, budget, including the, the rate rise. Most importantly, though, it's about long-term financial sustainability. Um, the, um, ECOSCA, I believe it is, that, that's the acronym, the Essential Services Commission of South Australia, uh, which plays um, an oversight role in relation to councils and the way they deal with their finances right now is targeting a number of, of councils. We might be next in terms of them having a look at the way we deal with our finances. Um, this is financially prudent. We need to make sure that this council is sustainable into the future and uh, you should therefore consider voting for this uh, motion. Thank you. This motion to find a second at Councillor Holmes. Thank you, Your Worship. I think that um, Councillor Rentoulis has articulated everything quite well and um, I'd just like to um, say that um, there are other councils going out there um, higher than us and I believe in other states councils have gone bankrupt because they haven't um, been able to manage their budget and I believe that our residents need to be able to have a say on, on how we're planning to manage the money that we're asking of them and uh, I think this is very good for transparency and lets everybody know and they can give us feedback and then we have the opportunity um, to, to make changes if it comes back um, that way. So thank you. Councillor Smuljani. Thank you, Mayor. Um, now I'm in the right section. Um, <laughs> in regards to Paro uh, 2, um, I've already um, spoken with regards to um, uh, page 141 being the incorrect uh, suburbs, which uh, I think is very important. My uh, my view on this annual business plan is that it is a draft. It does go out to the public. We do want to look professional, and I, I, I uh, strive that we are quite a, a very professional team. Um, so for me, um, I will liaise with uh, the, the uh, council staff uh, and uh, just give some updates with regards to some minor grammatical uh, errors within the ABP. Cheers. Thank you, Council Smuljanek. And as our usual practice, we do actually have as part of the resolution um, part two, which is that the CEO can make some minor amendments, as we do generally find that there are some uh, in such a large document. Councillor Vanderpeer. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, obviously, the intent of this um, recommendation is to go to the public and, and hear what they think. So I will happily um, support this recommendation to get that feedback. I um, have a question, um, well, it's something quite specific in the budget, so I'm on page 69 in the budgeted financial statements. I just have a question regarding the uh, contracts, material and other um, expenses. So the table stipulates that um, there will be a $5.1 million increase to the budget for that umbrella of costs um, and the annual business plan cites this cause being an increase in electricity and um, fuel prices and then it, it cites general inflation. Could I just get some confirmation or assurance from staff um, or clarity from staff about whether this um, increased budget is going to exclusively be spent on increased electricity and um, fuel, or are there other things within the umbrella that you foresee it being spent on? 
Mr. Green. Um, through the Mayor, thank you, Councillor Van de Peer. It's, it's a good question. Uh, no, it won't be exclusively spent on electricity and fuel. Um, what that will also cover is all the costs associated with the materials that we purchase to do our maintenance works. Um, basically, any any engagement that we have with an external provider um, who will provide us um, a service or a physical item, um, this covers all of that to pick up the inflationary costs that they will no doubt apply to, to their products that we purchase or services they provide. Councillor Norris. Thank you. Um, I'll keep it brief. Obviously, I get that this uh, motion is essentially just to go out to public consultation, and as always, I um, support that. We obviously need to hear what they're saying. They've pretty much got a bit of a, an indication of where the rate is. Um, it's been put out on social media. A lot of people have read tonight's agenda. Um, I know that we were talking about the cost of living and essentially CPI. So. Just to give you a bit of a rundown, December's was 8.4, January's dropped significantly to 7.4, February's 6.8, and I expect that March's results would be lower again. So everything is starting to ease up. Um, in the news as well, we've obviously had the Reserve Bank es essentially come out and say that they've made mistakes, um, which has obviously put the economy in a bit of dire straits. Um, and then we've obviously got mortgage stress on a lot of people as well. Um, the reason I sort of talk out about this um, is because I think it is significantly high. I think that everyone has a lot of stresses going on now with the cost of living with everything that's gone up. Um, but I will support obviously going out to public consultation, but I think you guys just need to keep that in the back of your mind going forward. Thank you. Councillor Yeah, thanks, Mayor Doherty. I'd like to just um, support the um, going out to public consultation at uh, the current rate rise proposed. I think uh, the Deputy Mayor summed up quite quite well that we, we've done the hard yards once um, for, for four years. Um, we drained our reserves in many of our, um, in our funding um, abilities. We lowered, we kept fees down, we returned back to structural surplus, we drained that and uh, we're back to where we are now with uh, also increased uh, depreciation. So this isn't the first time that this council has uh, gone through a whirlwind and had to uh, get to the other side of a structural surplus and I think it's very, it's, it's very, very important that we're very prudent. Um, I think we've only got to listen to previous councillors who have been here for 30 plus odd years and they've uh, been part of a journey where the council's had to potentially debt fund to, to operate and in 2023 we're still pro, um, paying the price so I definitely won't be part of a journey supporting debt funding and borrowing uh, because um, we haven't still uh, recovered from, from that and we're trying to pay down our bad debt who quite frequently we hear um, quite frequently from our CEO and he's really got a strong uh, drive to, uh, to, to reduce that. Acknowledging that every year um, we want to uh, in introduce new, new services um, something funding has to come from from somewhere, but it's appreciative to actually see that growth revenue is keeping a lot of these um, and past ones. Actually, growth revenue is being used quite often to uh, to really put a uh, dampen down on these uh, potential rate rises, um, which I'm, I'm whole, wholly support of. Um, but I think this annual business plan, yes, it is quite high, very important to consult with, with our community, um, but I think it's also very important to understand what, uh, what journey we went on four years ago, because we're going on that same journey right now, other than just having a, a higher than um, necessary rate rise if we compare the last four years. So um, in saying so, I look forward to the, the discussions um, with, with the community. Um, if not, it's going to be a very interesting um, annual business plan chat when we have to uh, cut some services or, or claw back. I look forward to that conversation because I haven't, uh, we haven't had that conversation in four years because no one was happy to enter uh, that conversation. So we speak it, but we don't, uh, we don't action it. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, just a couple of questions for me. Mm -hmm. uh, of the, the CEO, um, uh, Mr. Green, uh, in relation to the current inflationary level, whatever that is, and um, uh, Councillor Norris listed a number of uh, quarters, um, starting from higher and gradually getting lower. In terms of our position, how is that um, taken into account? Because um, I would imagine that over the last year, inflation could have been even higher, may have been 10%. 
and now is gradually coming down. Is that perhaps like an average level for, and, and it applies obviously over the next 12 months? Mr. Craig. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Councillor Antoulis. Um, look, the, the use of CPI indicators, um, firstly, I should say it's a lag indicator. So it's not a forward looking indicator, it's a backwards looking indicator, meaning arguably we've already incurred the impacts <clears throat> of the indicator at the time. Uh, and we've certainly seen that in our business, particularly around things like fuel, electricity, um, contractor costs, etc. Um, the the figure that we use and have used traditionally is the December figure. The reason for that is it's the most up-to-date figure that we have um, that we can apply to the formulating of the budget, which leads us up to tonight. Um, whilst there is a figure released in March, um, by the time we would reconfigure our budget, we would already be in the throes of uh, the consultation process with community. Um, and the challenge with that is if the, the March figure is less, um, it's easy to bring your budgeted figure down, um, but if it's more and you've already consulted the community, it's harder to go back and increase it further. So we've tended to use December as a regular figure that we use, um, reinforcing that it's a lag indicator and not a predictor of the future. Um, so arguably we've already started to incur those costs and what we're trying to do now is to make sure that we're adequately funded for the costs that we may have already incurred uh, into the future. Hopefully that answers your question, Councillor Rental. It does, thank you. And the other councillors wishing to make comment? If not, then Councillor Rental has the right to close if he wishes. No, I don't need to, I don't need to close, thank you. All right, councillors, with the motion as before us, so I'll put that. Those in favour, those against, I declare that carried. We then go to item 15.3, uh, normal board representation. Councillor Anya Zanz. Happy to move the staff recommend. Is that fine, a seconder? Yeah, happy to second that, thanks. Second by Councillor Arifi. Any other councillor wishing to speak? If not, then I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. Uh, then we go on to item 15.4, uh, 2023 Confidential Orders Review. Councillors, uh, we have a um, motion there. Would anyone like to, to move that way or move an alternative motion? <laughs> Councillor Smallwood Smith, Why? would you like to speak to a councillor? No, thank you. Thank you. Can someone second the motion? I have a seconder to the motion. Councillor Holtz, I keep missing you, I'm sorry. Would you like to speak to words? <laughs> Would you like to speak to words? No, thank you. I think that it's been everyone's read it and it's, yeah. Thank you, Councillor. Any debate or any discussion in relation to that? There being none, I'll put that to a vote. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that motion carried. Thank you. as we move on to informal discussion, which is nil. Move to item 17, confidential matters. The Corporate Governance Committee 23-24 draft annual business plan and long-term financial plan on page 354. Pursuant to section 92 and to section 93B, a local government act, the order is made to go into confidence. Does someone wish to move that way? Happy to move. Moved by Councillor Strowart. So final seconder. Seconded by Councillor on New Zealand's. Then, if there's no other debate on that, I will put that. Those in favour? 
Those against, I declare that carried and ask that the gallery be vacant. Support your local theatre and arts industry and enjoy a show at the Shedley. Playford's iconic Shedley Theatre is bringing a great selection of local and national performances to Elizabeth this winter. For more information on their upcoming shows, visit theshedley.com.au or call 8256 0500. Have you visited the Stretton Centre on Peachy Road, Manopara? Designed to support growth in the city of Playford, the centre offers dedicated workspaces from less than $10 per day, state-of-the-art event and meeting spaces for hire, a complimentary business support service to help you upskill, apply for grants and grow, workshops, networking and training for young kids right through to adults and the city of Playford Library. Contact our team for a tour on 8254 4666 or visit the Stretton Centre at 307 Peachy Road, Manapara. Did you know you can view your rates notice online at Playford Online Services? Simply register for an online account by visiting our website at playford.sa.gov.au and searching Playford Online Services. Once you've registered, you can request to have your rates notice delivered to your device or computer. Prefer to watch and learn? We have created some simple videos to show you how to register for an account, view your rates notices and set up direct debit. Simply search for Playford Online Services via the Playford website for more information. That website again, playford.sa.gov.au. Are you building a house or doing some renovations that require planning approval? The way you apply for planning approval has changed, along with some of the rules of the Planning and Design Code. South Australia's new planning system covering the entire state was implemented on the 19th of March this year. So to find out more, visit plan.sa.gov.au. Did you know your food scraps should go in the green bin or a home compost system? It's better for the environment, it's the right thing to do, and it's easy. Fight food waste by putting all your food scraps, peels and leftovers in the green bin. To find out more... All right, we're now back on Zoom. We've got no other items, ladies and gentlemen, so I'll close the meeting at three minutes past nine and thank you for your attendance. Support your local theatre and arts industry and enjoy a show at the Shedley. Playford's iconic Shedley Theatre is bringing a great selection of local and national performances to Elizabeth this winter. For more information on their upcoming shows, visit theshedley.com.au or call 8256 0500.